Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Dragonair Silent Gods video. In today's video, I want to show you a really fun team that I'm using in order to beat the Grave of Venom on stage 9. Okay, I've not done this like straight up in the first day when, uh, you know, in the first few days when it was open and whatnot, because it is a bit difficult. You know, you have to have a certain heroes, you have to have certain artifacts, a little bit of gear. And, you know, usually you would prefer to have them be 5 star ascended, okay, in order to do that. So... Uh, we are currently in, let me just see, what's the login day? I think it's like day 13 or 12. Okay, day 12. So we are almost two weeks in. And basically, by the time we get to like two weeks, the five star is unlocked. Today was the was the time actually when uh, we hit level 29, uh, sorry, 28. And that allowed us to start upgrading people to five star, which obviously gives us a massive uh, stat boost. So because of that, I said, you know what? I started farming stuff. My priority number one was getting f level five for the domains, which I've done the days before. Then the first priority after you get, you know, the domains to five, is always going to be goblin okay if you can get goblin to the last stage you want to try and three star it because you're gonna you know use the same amount of stamina on lower levels as you do on the highest level and because you're going to be doing a ton of goblin slayer you want to try and get that to the max but what i noticed is i cannot quite three star goblin three stage three so my goal was to go and farm some of the dungeons in order to give myself better gear and in general it's going to be the grave of venom that you're going to farm in order to get yourself the best damage pieces so when it comes to stage nine this time around we have a chance to get mythic gear then obviously once you get to stage nine you have a chance to drop legendary gear i'm not sure it can happen on the previous ones on stage seven and eight before we actually get to the 30 day mark where it's the the drop rate is doubled of you know the pressures tempering uh stand so you know up until then that's why you want to try to get to stage nine the one thing that i really love about this team is the fact that well i'm not using the use i'm not using the usual unkillable which most people try to do if they have them i'm talking about zephy plus oga because that kind of allows you to be able to survive the hit so it's not going to be the most free to play by any means however i'm going to show you the team i'm going to explain the principle and you basically take this and adapt to your team uh i'm also going to give you you know options of what you can use to replace for heroes and and at the same time options that you can use to replace for uh, artifacts as well okay and sometimes you know you might just not have the gear to get right there but this whole team revolves around uh kind of having enough survivability but at the same time having enough damage and at the same time having enough debuffs the reason why i'm mentioning all of these ones is because of the way that the uh, the grave of venom is this season okay so the first one is deals a we damage and these spells one debuff from all allies this is the same as it was in season two okay so pretty much the same nothing changed then this one deals poison damage to enemies within range this one has like a small range where it hits i think like two three people and it's just straight up damage Damage. and then when it comes to ultimate this is where it becomes a little bit uh, trickier this season and this is where it's really important to have a, a certain amount of debuffs in this team so basically what it does dashes to the current target's location and performs a triple kick each dealing poison damage and triggering flame element poisons to simultaneously attack that's the one that's usually you know the hit where he joins with the with the side eggs and that does a ton of damage to a certain target which you want to have be the the tank okay but this is the next part that you have to keep in mind and that makes it be tricky if the monster which is the boss has less than two debuffs when casting the skill the target will be changed to a random enemy so basically what that means is when the boss gets to do this if you don't have at least two debuffs on the boss he can randomly attack anybody else and if that happens and he attacks somebody at the back and he kills them then that's going to be a problem because you know the more you know the more people die from the team i think it's even if one person dies from the team the, the lower the chance of actually winning so that's why i really wanted to have a combination of buffs of debuffs in here and the way that i'm actually using it is you might have noticed while i was explaining and showing but i'm alternating the way that they do the ultimates and the key champions for this team are actually uh free ones which are going to be cigarette first of all and then the second one is going to be elminster if you're playing now in season three in what april 2024 you should have elminster unless you completely skipped it however you don't necessarily again you don't necessarily need elminster but you would want to bring somebody else that brings you an attack penalty and another debuff on the ultimate that's preferred because of the fact that if you don't have attack penalty for several times in a row and the boss hits you you're gonna be kind of dead 
I guess it could work without the attack penalty for the second one. It just might be a little bit trickier. Might just need to become a little bit tankier. So those are the first two key components. Sigrid, which, you know, it's a rare. She's amazing as always. Then the second one is uh, is Elmister again. Elmister brings attack penalty and accuracy penalty on his ultimate. Sometimes it seems like it doesn't land. But the amazing thing that Elmister also brings is those shields on the battle skill. Now, when it comes to Voresh, honestly, Voresh, the only reason he's in this team is because he brings a, uh, you know, full board attack, triple hit, which means he can hit the side decks as well and what that provides us is he, it, it also provides us with the witch's remains with the divas penalty and having debuffs on everybody means cigarette hits everyone does it full board so you know that's where Voresh comes in but if you don't have Voresh you maybe have somebody like a vector or somebody else like I don't know even a Karf could be useful because Karf does a uh, you know full board triple hits and he also brings you a burn so another debuff in that he could be useful in a witch's remains basically anybody that can that can do full boards and preferably several hits on the ultimate to be able to just enable cigarette and they will always go before cigarette you see i have my voresh always go before cigarette so when the cigarette hits <clears throat> it hits everyone it seems like i had bad rng just keep not landing those attack penalties however i do manage to survive because of the builds of everybody else now the last two key components are kind of like my favorite this season and they are the reason why i actually decided to go again this season with frost even though i didn't go with uh, you know the Oster, Dread, stuff like that. They are the couple, Finja and Theodamer. I just really love them. They're really fun. They're really amazing. However, again, they are not mandatory for this team, okay? You could re easily replace Theodamer with uh, Ardreth, okay? Because everybody should have Ardreth. Again, if you play Season 2 and you did it, if you didn't do it, then, you know, if you did not get Ardreth last season, then you have no reason to complain. I'm not going to allow you to complain, okay? She was a mandatory. She was an amazing legendary that should have been pretty easily acquired, even if you're completely free to play as long as you saved resources so Arjev would come and replace Tell Dammer in this team and then uh, if you do, again if you don't have the couple and uh, you would replace Tell Dammer with Ardreth and then Finja you would just replace with Garius okay you would just replace with Garius you bring the heals or any other uh, healer that's gonna bring you know heal on the ultimate heal on the battle skill you know all the good stuff that you actually need he's really amazing because he has a uh, you know a good passive he has a chance to you know just proc invincibility if uh, if he's close to dying because of the passive with her however you saw that he does not uh, proc that okay he does have this decreases damage taken by five percent because of this passive that he starts up with so you know he's a really cool one i really like him now when it comes to presets let me show you how i have them so i have a uh, Sacred starting at 12.2, then does it every 20 seconds. The reason I'm doing that is so that I allow Voresh to go first, do the full board hit, land, you know, his buff prohibition, and hopefully Witches remains, and then Sigrid goes, and then every 20 seconds. Then the second one is going to be Elminster. I have him at 22.2. You see it's exactly 10 seconds after Sigrid's, and then again every 20 seconds. What this makes basically is it has it makes you have attack penalty on the boss all the fight, okay? Because first one's at 12.2, then 10 seconds later, Elminster comes. And obviously, their attack penalties are for 10 seconds and then for 10 seconds. That's what makes it really amazing. Now, when it comes to builds, the way that I have them is Vorash, pretty straightforward. I do have some of these uh uh legendary gear, but they're not mandatory, honestly. You would just want Vorash to have enough accuracy to land his stuff and give him the witch's remains and then make him survivable okay or whoever's gonna be the Voresh you you don't care about them doing damage they're not gonna do damage they're in this team to apply witch's remains and then just survive he does bring a bit of healing based of attack but it wasn't that much then the next one's gonna be Sigrid Sigrid is uh again in uh I in a few pieces that I actually got from farming the previous levels, they're not, you know, it's not perfect by any means. I have good crit damage, but I have no crit rate, decent attack, you know, it's, again, it's not perfect, just accuracy. You want to be close to that 240 accuracy, but keep in mind that you have some other bonuses. I'm going to show you after I show you her build, but she's in basically this new set, what's it called? Aerial Batterer gives her some attack and crit rate and converts crit damage into attack. And then I have her in the Rabbit Tricks Roots. You don't have to have Ravage Tricks Roots, and if you don't have the, this one, just use the Rascal's Clank Shot, okay? This is amazing for her. You would have uh, the accuracy as well that it would provide, and it will also give you attack, and that way, you might not need to use an accuracy chest, and you can use an attack percent, HP, whatever you have. 
Now, when it comes to stats, you said that they only have what? 156 accuracy on her. Well, the reason is, well, we need 220, okay? So we have 156, okay? But we do have a lead of 30. She brings accuracy in all battles. That's 186. And then at the same time, if you if you look at the elemental affinity bonuses, which she's part of the element because it's poison with frost this season, she also gets that 30 from here. So that brings her to, what's that? 186, 216. But at the same time, I think I actually used a consumable. Uh, it expired. You can just use a consumable like this one that brings you 20 accuracy max HP. So if you cannot quite hit that accuracy requirement, keep in mind consumables. They're going to be game changing. They can bring you maybe accuracy, maybe HP, maybe attack, whatever you're missing for your team. So <clears throat> never forget about those. Okay, which which is uh, next one on the list? So we saw, uh, we saw what's his name? Voresh. We saw Sigra. Let's look at Elminster. So Elminster's not even five star yet. Okay, I didn't farm enough stuff. He's not five star, but he's going to get there. I do have him in the hourglass, but this one's not mandatory. Okay, I, I tested it out. I played it without the hourglass just by having one uh, Goblin Brawler set. You have enough skill haste so that you do the, the battle skill. Okay which is the shield before the boss does the first AOE, which means everybody should survive the hit, okay? As long as you do that, then the next time, you know, the boss is going to do a hit, you should have attack penalty already out there, and you should be just fine and survive. And <clears throat> what I focused on Elminster was the accuracy and then just whatever damage, because I, I couldn't get him a lot of enlightenment, so it's not massive shields, but it helped out. As you can see, I just have a assassin technique set and then a goblin brawler again on him no nothing too special just step a gear on this one then we have fenja fenja is actually in uh again try to make her survive she is five star she's uh almost 40k hp 2.2k defense i try to give a lot of enlightenment because her heal is based off of enlightenment and at the same time i give her the gatekeeper staff because you know what this is really fun if you have it you're gonna use it so it's not just garius that can use it she can use this one as well because she does some pretty massive shields so just use this one it gave me that extra layer of survivability <clears throat> And then when it comes to Theodemir, my tank, I actually have him again in some legendary gear, defense percent here, defense percent here, uh, just whatever I completed the sets, okay? It's not the best, not perfect, <clears throat> he doesn't benefit from enlightenment, it's just whatever works, it's a rare positive rune over here, and then I just have the banner of Oath, and the reason why, this one's really good. This banner is amazing because it gives you this. Uh, you know, extra defense, HP, defense, it's one of the best things that you can use in him. However, if, uh, you know, if you don't have that one leveled up and you have the Mask of the Lark, you can try this one as well, because you're going to have some buffs. He places buffs on himself, then you have Finger that places buffs, or whatever. Same principle, if you have Ardreth, you have somebody else that brings healing, that also brings buffs, you can use this, because for every buff that you have, it reduces the damage. So, you know, just adapt and test out what you have, but... I guess this is going to be it for this video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really happy with this team. I'm going to continue to farm a little bit more of Grave of Venom because, like I said, I need a little bit more gear on my account so that I can try and get my Goblin 3, Stage 3, to a 100% team. Once I get uh, there, I'm going to make a video on that one and I'm going to show you that team. And I'm just going to give you a little spoiler. It's basically this team just instead of Elmaster, I have Zarlath, okay? That's my goblin team. And it works like a charm because everybody does some damage, brings some, you know, good stuff and whatnot. So, yeah, if I'm going to change something, obviously, I'm going to show it in the video once I make it. But anyway, this is going to be it for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.